Hi, this is uh, Jay Harwood's a special edition of Maisie Mets conversa Conversation, 30s football coach in Notre Dame, Marcus Freeman. Marcus, I am a legitimate Notre Dame fan. This is my Rudy helmet. Okay? That is awesome. He signed it, wrote his play up, huh? Yes, yeah, he wrote the play up. And this is uh, um, play, like, play like a champion. Coach Holt. Yeah, so I'm, I've been to, been to South Bend a couple of times. Yeah. Enjoyed it there. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm Jewish, right? I took pictures with Touchdown Jesus a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I walked around the campus. It was great. I mean, it was a great thrill. I saw people win over Boston College and uh, Florida State in the games. I said, we saw a game before at a Yankee Stadium, I think when they played Syracuse yep. a, couple, a couple of years ago. Yep. Beginning your second year. Things more settled a little bit for you? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. I think going into your second year, you know, you know what to expect. Right, going into your first year, you have a plan. Um, you've been dreaming of this moment for so long, yeah. and things don't quite always go as you foresee them on the front end. I think going into the second year, you know what spring ball was going to be like. You know what summer is. You know yeah. what fall camp is, and so you can make the necessary adjustments that you need to, um, and then be able to adapt and adjust depending on how the season goes. Is this really your first recruiting? I mean, you came in in December, right? Mm -hmm. Go in the next year. Is this really your first full blown recruiting class, or you know? Yeah, I, I would say part partially twenty the the last year's twenty three class right. and then this year's twenty four class. But you know, I've always said this, man. When when they name me head coach, all those guys are my guys, right. and and that's what I love about this, man. Is everybody, no matter if I recruited them or not, those are my guys, and uh, it is an honor and a joy to coach them. So you you. Defense coordinator and linebacker coach December, no, January of 2021, right? Yep. yep. And a, a year later, you're the head coach in Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Rockney, Parsegian, Leahy, Brian Kelly. What did you, you they announced it in, in uh, December, December 3rd or something yep, like that. Yep. Yep. When did you, you, I'm sure you knew a couple of days before, right? Yeah. Well, I, I was told that it was going to happen. And uh, I just remember talking to Jack Swarbrick, our athletic director. Right. And after I interviewed and, you know, he said, hey, we're going to do this now. You can't talk to anybody. You can't tell your parents. You was that hard? Them. It was really difficult because all of our players were texting me saying, coach, who's going to be our head coach? Right. What's going on? We're hearing it might be you. What's the deal? And I couldn't respond. And that was the hardest part. I saw the video. Did you announce it with stream live yeah. and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. That'd be a big honor for you. I mean, man, I, it, it, it was the, one of the highest moments ever, in, in really in my lifetime. Um, you know, to be able to come out of that locker room and to uh, see those guys and to just embrace them, right? And, and to embrace them as their head coach, um, it, it was a moment I'll never forget. How long did it take you to Newark Notre Dame? Was it about you were there a year before you got there? Did you? Feel it, or it, it took it was a gradual thing, or right away. I, I think I had a perception of Notre Dame right before I got there, and and it's probably the the same perception that many people that haven't been a part of the university have. Um, but then when you get there, it doesn't take long to realize how special that place is. And I'm still learning every day history facts and history lessons, right. but. Notre Dame is special, and what makes it special is what this place does for young people when you come through it and you are finished. And and that's what I love about being a part of this place is the life-changing opportunities that young people get. Don't commit. It did start off great, but it got better. Yeah. Three losses start the season. Yeah. Um, you lost to Ohio State and Marshall by 16 points combined. To the third quarter, the fourth quarter beat Cal. Yeah. And then, then nine of the last 11 games, yeah. you win. What what changed, Coach? I mean, well, I think we had to make some some tactical right. changes. We had to figure out what we did well. Um, you know, sometimes in those di most difficult moments, you got to really, really dissect everything you're doing. And, and I think that's what we did. We really looked at everything from the way we practiced to what we were doing schematically, offense, defense, special teams, and and really to the way. Our mindset was like maybe it was too much. Everybody had to reevaluate what we were doing. And so our guys were able to get a win versus Cal, and the belief started. Then we lost three games later. We won three in a row, and then we lost one to Stanford. And, and Close game, 16-14. Yeah, yep, yep. And, and USC was a tough loss. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but I think what you learn is that, man, these guys are resilient, right? And it's never easy. Um, it, it's important to get the right personnel in there. And, and I'm, I'm grateful for those lessons that we learned last year. How how down were you after the Marshall loss? A young guy, 
three losses in a row. Yeah. I mean, is it, is it, was it hard to sleep after that? or, or? Uh, It's always hard to sleep. You know, no matter if you win or you right. lose, it's hard to sleep. But um, after the Marshall loss, it, it, you were at a, a moment of, of unclarity, right? Is that you lost a bowl game, you lose to Ohio State, now all of a sudden you lose to Marshall. And, and I think after the first two games, you can find a way to make some excuses, right? Man, ah, it's our bowl, first game, bowl game. Yeah. You didn't have a chance to prepare. Then you lose to a really good Ohio State game, but you play them close. And then once you lose to Marshall, like there's no more excuses. There's there's just issues that you have to fix. And um, there was some lonely moments sitting in that office trying to figure out what does it take to have success. But what I learned in that moment is when I walked out of my office, I had to be the most confident person in, in the entire program. And cap off the year with a great win in South Carolina. And exactly. How was the meet? Was it you get national meet? You just don't get South Bend. You get, I mean, was it tough to? De- I mean, to deal with the media the, after the first two losses. You know, I think I've always been a person that's just honest, and they'll ask you hard questions after a win or a loss, and and I've always been a person that just wants to be honest with them. I try not to read the things they write, good or bad, right? Praise or criticism, because I don't want it to sway my mindset. My mindset is constant improvement. And so sometimes you can read different media articles and things, and then all right. of a sudden it sways you out of the focus of constant improvement. And so I try not to pay attention to that. I'm always going to be honest with the guys in the media, um, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. You you, you guys open up in Dublin. and How tough is it to open up a year, a season away, not in the United States, and then you have a game a week later with Tennessee State? Is that – not the easiest way to open up a year. Yeah, it's not the easiest way for sure. Um, there's some logistical issues that you have to make sure that yeah. everybody in your entire program's on point. Um, the ability to get this group of 110 players to Dublin, Ireland midweek and keep them focused on what's important. This isn't a, a vacation. We're not going to see Dublin. We're not going there to sightsee. We're going there because we have a, an agenda and, and our goal is to win a football game. And so to keep this group focused is my utmost is utmost important to me. And so um, we've had to plan. We'll have to adapt and adjust within whatever issues come up logistically, but um, we know the opponent we face, and it's going to be a good See, game. in baseball, when we make trips abroad, you usually get more time to recover. Yeah. You don't have a whole lot of time to recover. No, we don't got much time at all. And uh, we'll play uh, uh, Navy. It's actually Saturday night in Dublin, right? And we'll sleep really fast. We'll sleep really fast get up about 6 a.m. and fly right back and start preparing for Tennessee State. Yeah. Now, you won't be sleeping much that week, right? <laughs> you have a lot of young kids, too, right? You have you Six. Said. Yeah. How do you manage that? Um, you got understanding a, wife, right? Yeah, you got a extremely uh, strong wife. That's one, right, that keeps a lot of – you know, when you become a head coach, what you realize is a lot of people try to keep things off your desk. Right. Um, including your wife, right? Yeah. And, and keep a lot of issues that maybe the kids are having away from me just so I can focus and – um, she is uh, so unselfish and, and really takes care of everything um, within our household. And so that's how I really get it done. Tell me about the transfer the transfer portal. You have Sam Hartman, Wake Forest. Mm-hmm. Is that really two different recruiting in, in the young kids in the transfer portal? Is that really complicated? That company kind of, adds to the burden, right? Well, I think that it's just the reality of that's a part of college athletics now is that you have to understand. Like People say, do you recruit your roster? Do you have – it's a called building trust, right? I don't like the, the terms I'm recruiting our roster. I like the term of we're building trust with our guys that they believe in the vision that we have for our program. And so um, it's a constant, constant uh, a job to make sure you're building a trust so that you keep those guys that might not be getting the rewards that they want right now still in your program. Some will leave. Some will decide to leave. And, and when those guys leave, you are very strategic in who we look for to replace those guys. We're not going to major in the transfer portal. That's not who we are and what we're going to do. So how did you set on your course, CM Hartman from Wake Forest? Uh, when we decided we want a quarterback, I said, get the best in the country. And um, when he got to the portal, I didn't know who he was. I've heard his name. Um, did he play well against Notre Dame? No, he didn't. Did he I wasn't have- there. No, I'm th- not sure. I thought he played some good games on TV. I watched him. He, had some, he yeah. is. I, we watched him in crossover games, right? right? When we're playing ACC opponents and Wake Forest was, I've seen him. But I didn't know. I'm not, I'm a, I come from a defensive background. I've heard the guy's name. He's second, the second yeah. leading passer in all ACC. But the thing I loved about him more than his traits was his personality yeah. and the fit he would have in our locker room. Like You have to be really strategic in who you bring in because one person can kill a culture. Right, and so he is the perfect fit for our locker room, and has done a great job. Going back to last for a second, win over Clemson was a big win for you guys, right? Ranked team, 
That was a, you know. A, yeah, it was the biggest one, obviously, um, up to that point. And I think what it did was, you know, we're three and three at the halfway mark. Um, we've won three games, but don't have that signature win. And to beat Clemson was a top five, top four team at the time. Um, I think it gave our guys true belief in, in our culture and what we were doing. And so that was a huge win. Tell me about what you, what's your hype, what should a Notre Dame fan look for this year's team? I think we always want to be a balanced program, right? We want to be a team that, that is O-line and D-line driven. What's that mean is that our offensive line, our defensive line have to be the strongest positions amongst our team. And um, we will stay pro style um, in our offensive terminology and what we're doing, but we got a great offensive line. We got a big running back. You got a really good quarterback. Got some young wide receivers that are talented. So I'm excited with our new offensive coordinator, Jarrett Parker, and what we'll do offensively. And then defensively, we return every coach we've had defensively. A lot of the returning starters are back. And so um, I'm excited for, for what we're going to do this year. How about Ohio State in September, big game for you. I tell you what, we got Navy, Tennessee State, Navy. NC State. Central Michigan. Oh, then Ohio State week right. five. So yeah, yeah, we'll get to them, right? Yeah. Well, everybody's going to talk yeah. about that game, but our focus has to be to take care of Navy, you know. And and yeah. when we get to week five, our job has to be to play at our full potential. All right, serious question: How many times have you seen Rudy? Oh, uh, at least five. Five. I got you and, beat by about two hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I now I watched beat. it four times probably before I was. Was 18. that part of the job interview? No, no, no. Four times before I was eighteen. <laughs> The minute I was named defensive coordinator, I made the whole family watch Rudy. Rudy did, and, and uh, that was the last time I watched it. And have, I've seen the new Rockney story about nine million times. Yeah. The left have been right in my health. I know the whole thing. I became a Ronald Reagan fan because of the Gipper. So just, just run so inside you know. and outside, inside and outside. I, was, huh? I, I know, I know go, 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 till can't go no more. But I, mean, I had a great time. I, just something about the campus, I mean, yeah. it's, it just gets you when you run. It's, it's not, special, man. It is special. Just like you said, right? And, and where'd you grow up at? And New Jersey. You grew up in New Jersey. Yeah. You're Jewish. I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and I was a Christian. And you know what? You can go to this place in South Bend, Indiana. That it really is a mile and a half long, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big, big campus. And fall in love, and uh, that's yeah. what I, I love be, about being a part there. So, one baseball question: You're not a Mets fan. To be honest, you're not a Mets fan. I understand that. Do you follow the Reds? Are exciting this year with all the yeah. exciting players they have. I grew up watching the Reds. I'm right. from Dayton, Ohio. They're about 45 minutes down the road, and you know that was the the Ken Griffey, Chris Sabo, right. Eric Davis, Daryl Strawberry, yeah. um, Barry Larkin. Yeah. I mean, that's when I uh, was really, really growing up in Dayton, Ohio. And I've always followed them now. They kind of went down a little bit. But now, now they're, they're, they're right up in first place. They got place the, uh, the new, what's the young guy? Ellie De La Cruz. Yeah, he's still, he's still yeah. the street base. He's, he's pretty special. Yeah, and, he's, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. always deep down rooting for my Reds. That, that's that's Today, right. I'm obviously rooting for the Well, Mets. listen, I, I mean, you know, Will, who's our social media guy, we, we got the games together. We root for Notre Dame, legitimate fan. I've been doing this podcast probably five, six years. Probably more excited doing this interview than Strawberry Good and Gary, you know, <laughs> uh, anybody else. I've been a big Notre Dame fan. Newt Rockley the whole bit. I wish you the best of luck from the Mets. Thank you. And go all the way this year. All right, man. Thanks it's my pleasure. Time, Thank you, guys. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Okay.